Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in today's podcast we're going to take a look back to what the new features were in Factory Talk View Site Edition 9.0. This product was released very, very late in 2016, actually during the holidays in 2016 when everybody was uh, on Christmas break. And, um, you know, at the time I didn't have a, a license for Factory Talk View SE, so I didn't cover what was new because I actually couldn't use it. Since then, I've upgraded my View Emmy package to View SE, and I'm actually teaching a View SE course, which you can find over at the Automation School. And I thought it would be good before we cover what's new in View SE 10 that just came out like seven, eight days ago to take a look back and see what came out in version 9. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now, if you're watching, you'll see I have the official release notes from ab.com open. If you're listening, I'll try to give you as much detail as possible here. But, um, you know, one of the big things with this release, just like ViewME version 9, is we finally got Windows 10 support. Now, it's not Windows 10 Home. It's Windows 10 Pro, Enterprise, IoT, etc. But, uh... Home operating systems not supported. Um, you can get it to install on a home operating system, but it's painful and I'm still running into issues, so I don't recommend it. Um, with that said, let's come down here and take a look at the new features here. And uh, the biggest, one of the biggest ones, I think, is the new Trend Pro. Now, this is the trending object that's in Vantage Point. It's very powerful and uh, it allows you to do like ad hoc trends in the client window when the system's running, which is very cool. And uh, it has all kinds of features, statistics, and um, it's really worth looking at. If you do any amount of trending inside of Factory Talk View SE, this Trend Pro is well worth your time to look at. It's extremely powerful, easy to use, and uh, I like it. I really liked it. I used it a lot when it was in Vantage Point and uh, glad to have it in uh, View SE. Now, it supports both the USC data logs and factory talk historian tags. So you can look at both of them, either of them. Um, with that said, they also added the recipe pro editor. Now this is huge because we had a uh, recipe plus back in the RSV 32 days, but we never had anything similar inside of factory talk view SE. And uh, we, we actually had it in um, Emmy a few versions back, right? So uh, to get this in view SE is uh, really cool. And uh, they're talking about the Recipe Pro Plus editor specifically here. And uh, saying it gives you advanced recipe management. All the functions can be done at runtime. So you can create new recipes, delete recipes, all that. And you don't need a Factory Talk View Studio license to do that. With that said, you can also use it to export recipes to CSV files or import recipes from CSV files. I know back in the day in the Iris View 32 days, I actually wrote a VB app that would input the InTouch, one of in touch uh, CSV recipe files into Recipe Plus. So um, this having this feature I built in is so cool. They also added some commands along with this. Um, recipe Pro Edit, that brings up the Recipe Pro Editor, and Recipe Pro Download. Now I think... <laughs> I think they made a typo here in the release notes because it says Recipe Pro Edit twice. I would imagine there's probably a Recipe Pro Upload as well, but uh, that's not listed here. We'll look at that. I hope to actually uh, play around with these and record some uh, videos on how to use these new features here in the future uh, in between uh, creating lessons for my courses up at the Automation School. Um, in addition to that, they got a hyperlink animation. Now, this is cool. So almost any object that can have a touch animation on it you know, and this excludes numeric inputs and string inputs, um, can have this new hyperlink animation. As we were talking about with Factory Talk View Emmy, the cool thing about this is not to let your people browse the internet. Please do not connect your SCADA system to the World Wide Web, which is full of hackers and uh, malware and whatnot. But the cool thing about this is to... Um, you know, allow you to you open up a PDF that's maybe a manual or a operating procedure or a, uh, you know, a troubleshooting guide or, you know, you know, some kind of document that that would help your operators uh, identify what's going on or learn about what's going on on the screen. In addition to that, you may have help files or, you know, internal HTML files or websites you want them to access. Maybe it's a reporting system where they have to fill in their production report, right? 
So uh, yes, while we don't want to, <laughs> while we don't want to connect our SCADA system to the World Wide Web, um, we definitely uh, want this feature. It's a very cool feature. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's some new built-in functions for Factory Talk Alarm and events. And basically, these functions give you the current count. So, you know, that was one of the cool things about the old system tags, right? It told you how many alarms were uh, suppressed and how many were active. Well, they added a bunch more functions just for alarm and events, including the number of disabled alarms, the number of alarms in alarm but shelved, and the number of in alarm alarms and suppressed, the number of normal alarms shelved, <laughs> And the number of normal alarms suppressed. That was a mouthful. But um, hey, options are great, right? And having all these new functions is just it just makes designing graphics that can take advantage of alarm and events easier, that much easier. But here's probably the biggest feature here of the uh, version 9.0 is um the logic designer tag extended property support. So you know, for a while now in Studio 5000, we've been able to add a uh, an at min, an at max, an at description, an at engineering unit, an at state to our tags. You know, this is all kinds of stuff we used to do with HMI tags. But once we get direct referencing with uh, with logics, you know, why would we want to create a tag database anymore? But on the flip side, the downside was we still, you know, by doing direct referencing, we had no way to do a min, a max, a description and whatnot like we did with HMI tags. But now... With version nine of USE, we can we can actually access those tags, extended properties, which is very cool, and uh, not only cool for us designers, but also very cool for you know the people doing the plant PAX uh, process objects, those faceplates, because that's gonna that should really add some power to what they do as well. And next, they added a data communication inhibit bit, and this allows you to inhibit like a shortcut. Um, why would you want to do this? Well, let's say you have 20 machines all connected to your factory talk view SC. If one goes down, it can really slow down the startup of a client or, um, you know, just the operations of the clients. Cause when it goes to screens that have data from that, uh, PLC, that's down, not on the network, maybe it's down for servicing. Um, it's trying to connect to all those tags. And so by just inhibiting the shortcut, we can really speed things up. So um, I haven't tried this feature yet. I'm looking forward to trying it. But um, something people have been asking for for a very long time, and I'm very glad they found a way to get it into the package uh, back in version 9. Um, some other features they added, optimized installation, which I just went through in my course. Really, really cool. Um, great job um, on Windows 10 Pro, <laughs> not on Windows 10 Home. I had all kinds of issues. A dynamic decimal place feature. So now you can really control to the nth degree uh, the how the decimal places show up with your like numeric displays or numeric inputs. And it's pretty powerful. Um, there's a great little demo that comes with version 9, a VUSC demo that kind of shows this off, which is cool. And maybe we'll, we'll take a look at that this week. But um, very powerful. It's a small thing, but Man, it just gives you so much control. It's a good thing. And that includes scientific notation uh, as well. Some other things here, uh, printing the PDF. That is awesome, right? So now the screen print or print display command will can print your, uh, your screen or display to a PDF file. That's pretty awesome. In addition to that, they've added some screen statistics inside the graphic editor. So you can see, you know, total number of reference tags, total number of used expressions, and they even enhance some of the security functions. So now the function current user has code, current user has group, and current computer has group can have a parameter that's a string tag or a placeholder. So that's cool. And they can also be a combination of a literal string and a string tag. So it just gives you lots of options if you want to, you know, indirectly, you know, uh, replace parts of a tag, you know, maybe you have a pop-up and you want to use tag parameters or literal tags to uh, replace a portion of the text when you pull something up, like a pop-up display or on-top display. Again, this is going to be huge for creating your own little face plates or plant PAX process objects just to allow all of it. And I'm sure because this came out last year, they've already implemented it, but uh, very cool stuff. 
As far as corrected anomalies, <laughs> there were quite a bit. There were things with the file viewer utility not working that were fixed. There were uh, issues where VUSC client screens would stop responding for 30 to 40 seconds that have been repaired. Um, you know, purging uh, the records from the database sometimes didn't work. When you were using two horizontal monitors, pop-ups would never, you couldn't get the pop-ups displays, the on-top displays, to appear on the secondary monitor. So that was repaired. There was an issue with daylight savings time and then uh, trends that was fixed. The PowerFlex 755 drive faceplate, Plant PAX drive faceplate was repaired. It wasn't displaying correctly. There was uh, replication issues due to uh, SQL Express starting up and being kind of slow with its starting, causing the replication to fail. Um, there were issues with using parameters as a trend pend. And there were also uh, the issue where if you, when you uh, installed previous versions, I think it was version uh, 8.1 or 8.2, it would actually remove Arial Bold from your operating system. So good news, version 9 no longer removes fonts from your operating system. So that's good. And there's a whole list of known anomalies too. I'm not going to go into those. If you want to know what those are, just head up to ab.com, go to the product compatibility area and search on Factory Talk View Studio or Factory Talk View Site Edition, and you'll see the release notes there next to the downloads. And with that, if you found this podcast helpful, please give me a like and a thumbs up. And if you know anybody who would like to learn how to use the Panel View Plus or Factory Talk View, tell them to come visit me over at theautomationschool.com. And that is the end of the podcast. My name is Sean Tierney from theautomationschool.com. Until next time, peace.